This week, a new study by the Fraser Institute confirms that there's a wide discrepancy between public sector salaries and similar jobs in the private sector. But you know what? That's not even close to the whole story. The gap increases significantly when other benefits, things like more sick days, more personal days, are taken into account, as well as job security, medical benefits, and earlier retirement than their private sector counterparts. And this is the biggie, the multi-billion dollar difference between public and private sector pensions. You know, over the years, the media has regularly misled Canadians by talking about public sector wage demands and wage settlements. That's not even close to how much the taxpayer's on the hook for. They should always be talking about the cost of the compensation package. It's not salaries that bankrupt cities and states. No, comparatively higher salaries may push deficits higher. It may increase government debt, may crowd out other program spending. But it's the deferred cost of pensions that bankrupted Detroit, Stockton, California, Atlantic City, push Chicago into junk bond status. You know that right now, every man, woman, and child in California is on the hook for 93000 U.S. for their state's unfunded public sector pensions? 93000 Yet unfunded public sector pension liabilities are rarely mentioned in the media. It's seen as some sort of right-wing conspiracy to point out the liabilities that taxpayers are on the hook for. That's the ticking time finan- or ticking financial time bomb that's already gone off in the jurisdictions I just mentioned, but there's so many more to come. Right now, we as taxpayers are on the hook, for example, for $8.1 billion in unfunded pensions in Canada Post alone. I was looking at the 2014 budget report in Alberta. Well, it says that the province owes $10.7 billion in unfunded pension liabilities. That's despite the fact, by the way, that Alberta taxpayers are already paying higher contributions to public sector pensions, and they also paid in hundreds of millions more in special contributions on top of that. 88% of public sector workers are covered by a registered pension plan, with 94% being defined benefit. And I invite you to memorize what defined benefit pension plans mean. It, a defined benefit plan guarantees a specific payout, no matter what the value of the underlying pensions. So if the underlying pensions sort of take a dive, it doesn't matter. And there's an unfunded problem, the taxpayers are on the hook for any shortfall. It's interesting to compare if 88% of public sector workers are covered by a re- registered pension plan, 94% being defined benefit, Look at the private sector. Less than 25% of private sector workers have a workplace pension, and less than half of those is defined benefit. It's a monster discrepancy. The crunch is going to come, by the way, when those without a workplace pension, about 60% of Canadians, many of which are having trouble saving for their own retirement, are then going to have to ante up more money in taxes to provide for the unfunded public sector liabilities. I mean, the discrepancy in compensation, especially pensions, is financed, by the way, by the middle-class taxpayer, not the mythical top 1%. I mean, we got to get this. There's only 288,000 Canadians that make over that threshold to enter the 1%. That threshold's about $227,000. They're already paying half their income in some form of tax, so there is obviously not enough money left over to finance the pension liability or any other major program spending. So the burden, as always, the facts bear it out, mainly falls on the 9 million Canadians making between 45 and 90,000 a year. So this is your problem. In the last 15 years, the wage and compensation gap between public and private sector workers has grown significantly. I mean, I can think I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and they just started to laugh when he said he heard the term, you know, for politicians or government workers referred to as public servants or civil servants. He says, are you kidding? We're working for them. Over half my year's salary goes to perform some sort of uh, salary benefit and pensions in the form of taxes. That's not unusual. And looking at the results of the Fraser Institute study, the BC Federation of Labor glibly, glibly replied that the solution is just to pay private sector workers more. You know what? I'd be surprised if either one head of a private sector union thinks it's that easy and that it can happen without consequences. You know, what makes me even cringe more with that kind of a suggestion, just pay them more, is the absurd part, is that public sector union leaders continue to push for higher corporate taxes, you've all heard it, what research clearly shows lowers workers' wages. There was a recent study by Canadian economist Kenneth McKenzie, Agreed Fareed. They found that wages in Canadian provinces dropped by more than a dollar. Wages dropped by more than a dollar when corporate revenues increased by a dollar. No, that is not the way to go. 
But that is still obscure. I mean, I could go in for that for ages, but that obscures the big question. Why should there be this discrepancy between public and private sector compensation? Is it affordable? And then you got the old age Canadian question, is it fair to private sector workers? 